Coming up next, a couple of great interviews about a song that barely missed number one with its original artist, and then decades later, it hit the top of the charts. In fact, the song has hit the charts in four different decades. Originally sung by a legendary artist who was shocked when two of his biggest hits were remade at the same time in 1987, both of the remakes went to number one, and incredibly, he replaced himself at number one. Coming up next, we have an exclusive. The singer behind the original and the singer behind the cover that went to number one. Great show coming up on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you ever saved up your allowance to buy a 45 single, a cassette single, or a maxi single, CD single, you're gonna dig this channel of deep musical nostalgia. Make sure to click the big red button to subscribe. We would love to have you as part of our community. We celebrate the best in rock and roll through interview, through history. We've got a lot of great ones coming up and check us out on Patreon as well. So it's time for another edition of our show, Revelations. This is where featured artists take us for a deep dive in the rare stories about their greatest songs and their greatest albums. Insight you just won't find anywhere else. Today we have the story of a song that went to the top five in 1967, and then it went all the way to number one exactly 20 years later in 1987. It's a classic song, I Think We're Alone Now, by Tommy James and the Shondells. So Tommy James and the Shondells took it to number four in 1967, and then teen popster Tiffany took it all the way to number one in 1987 when we had the famous Debbie Gibson versus Tiffany pop war of the late 80s. You remember that? The song also went to number four in the UK in 2006 by the girl group Aloud. And then Green Day frontman Billy Joe Armstrong took his version to number seven on the alternative charts in 2020, making it a top 10 in four separate decades. Coming up next, Tommy James and Tiffany both tell us the story behind this song and how along with Moni Moni by Billy Idol, Tommy James replaced himself at number one decades after he made both of these songs famous. Very cool interview coming up with both of them. As we go into the story, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses that I wear every single day on these episodes. I got to tell you, I love them. You can get a pair for every day of the week. That's how cost effective this is. Very quality. Just go to the info button right up here to get our best price. I promise you'll be a customer for life. Uh, you can also see how you look before you buy with their amazing mirror feature. Check it out today. Here's Tommy James and Tiffany with the story of I Think We're Alone Now. All of a sudden, you invent a whole new genre with bubblegum with I Think We're Alone Now. Yeah, we didn't it, mean to. I know. Uh, it was an accident. I Think We're Alone Now really uh, gave me such an education that I could have never had with any other song. And the reason is we'd had three hits. Before that, we had a hanky panky. Uh, say I am. And it's only love. Three gold records. At that moment, um, Richie Cordell and Bo Gentry, who were Kama Sutra songwriters mm -hmm. from. Uh, and by the way, I was so grateful that Roulette allowed me the freedom to put, put a production team together and, and to bring people from other labels because they were really locked in the late 50s. But they sold singles. They knew how to sell records and, uh, you know, allowed me to put this massive te team together. Uh, Bo and Richie uh, started it off and they brought me I Think We're Alone Now. And it was a Ballad, really. Yeah. I mean, it was slow, and but you could hear it was a smash. As yeah. soon as you, the, he played the hook. You know. They played it on a piano, and uh, didn't matter what you played it on. You, yeah. you knew it was a hit record. And you had the idea 
to speed, not only speed it up, but to raise the key from G to A, right? No, that's true. And uh, uh, we went in, did a demo, and uh, Bo sang the lead. And I went in, played the guitar, and that's where we came up with the uh, eighth notes. Doom, 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 doom. That pulsating bass yeah, line, the staccato. Yeah, it became a signature. And we didn't mean for it to. It was just something we did on the demo. Uh, when we, we, we then took it back to roulette, Morris Levy flips out. That's a freaking hit. So we uh, went back in the studio, did the same arrangement. One of the things I learned was the art of making records for AM radio. What, what I learned is the old adage, less is more. Right. Something's going to fill up the radio speaker. The more instruments you add, the smaller every instrument is. And plus the compressors and the limiters on yep. radio. When we were doing I Think We're Alone Now, first of all, we started layering, you know, doing the bass and the drums first, then the guitar. We started layering things. We hadn't done that. Uh, and then I brought in Jimmy Wisner, who was a, a world-class arranger. We learned a real amazing lesson. We weren't writing songs. We were writing records. Suddenly, we're make, the intro had to be so long because the DJ yeah. talked over it. Uh, the record couldn't be any longer than three minutes because they had to get so many spots on the air. And uh, so there are all these r radio rules that uh, happened... We did accidentally with Hanky Panky, but we really learned with I Think We're Alone Now. And we had the signature sound uh, that later got called bubblegum. Controversial at the time, too, because of the giving the atmosphere of forbidden activities and all that, the radio. Well, true enough, they banned our, our album cover. <laughs> They said, it, they think, I think we're alone now, it was a dirty record. Meanwhile, the number one record of the top, it was uh, Let's Spend the Night Together yep. by the Rolling Stones. Yeah. But that started this production team uh, of Richie and Bo and, and Jimmy and Allegro, and we had 10 more hits with them. Well, Lena Lovage covers it in 78. That was a great cover, but massive worldwide resurgence in the 80s. 1987, of course, Tiffany. Tiffany and Debbie Gibson start this huge teen pop kind of thing that was going on. George Tobin gave you a cassette with the song, I think we're alone now on it. And I always read, because I always used to listen to the Top 40 Countdown each week, and Casey Kasem would always tell the stories behind the songs. Right. I love that. I'd write them down and I'd just memorize them. And, but the story I heard is that you were like, I don't know about this song. Because <laughs> I was, yeah. You know, didn't know if that was the right covering it, thinking the song, I don't know, is this hip? Was it modern enough? I had never heard I Think We're Alone Now before. Um, didn't know of Tommy James and the Shondells. If I had, I didn't really make the connection. George said, well, just learn the song. So I did learn the song, came back the next day, and it was all this dance track. But for me, I was a little worried about getting typed as a dance artist. I mean, George sat down and he said, listen, you gotta trust me on this, really. I, I, I think this will work, and it did. Let's talk about the first album that recorded for MCA, which the iconic album cover. That was an album that your first single, Danny, didn't chart. Danny, when you're in, Danny, right. And then he had the idea of the mall tour, shopping mall tour. That was kind of a brilliant idea yeah, for that moment. Yeah, that's where I hung out. I mean, it made total oh, sense. Yeah. Danny, the single was released. That was the first single, and it wasn't doing well at radio. And that's when George decided to just totally change it and put on I Think We're Alone Now. And that started getting traction because there probably wouldn't have been a mall tour without that happening first. Yeah. Um, 
And, you know, he had some radio connections and pretty much as a friend said, spin this. I'm doing this rogue without the labels consent, but this is the wrong single. I knew it was the wrong single. It's really, I think we're alone now. So they started testing it on a favor and we started getting people calling in. Then they started to have to add the song because there was so many people calling in. And then that led to the mall tour. How do we save this project? Because really my whole album was going to be shelved. I was doing clubs in New York. I wasn't even old enough to be in the club. So <laughs> the music was doing great, but nobody could get to know me. I couldn't really go out and sign autographs or hang out. So it was out the door I went, and that was really tanking. You know, you have to do the whole, the whole thing. You have to be able to talk to the people and get to know them. And I had nothing in common with yeah. 21-year-olds or even 18-year-olds at that time. So my project was going to be tanked. And through the momentum of I think we're alone now, I think that's what really started my A&R guy, Larry Salters, going, okay, this can't happen. We are making some progress, but where would we show this artist? And he was walking around a mall one day with his, with his daughter and thought, what about the malls? When it came to me, I said, yeah, that makes the most sense because that's where I hung out all the time. I mean, I grew up in Norwalk, California. I might have $5 on me, you know, between me and my girlfriend, we might have $5 on us. But back then you could go and share an Orange Julius, which was my favorite drink. And all you did is go to the record store. 1987, when I think we're alone now came out. I mean, number one in the US and Canada and Ireland, New Zealand, I know. The UK, <laughs> South Africa. Bigger than Africa. I ever thought. I know. But that goes to number one of the pop charts. Well, uh, all and Billy, uh, Billy Idol and Tiffany, yeah. they went up the charts like they were holding hands. Well, when it hit number one, what's cool, you were in the top five at that moment with Fleetwood Mac when it was it's at number exciting. one. It's exciting, I that know. Cool? So you hit number one, you were 16, you recorded it when you were 13. Madonna, Michael Jackson, Fleetwood Mac, and Billy Idol all in the top yes. five with you, which incidentally, Billy Idol's Moni Moni, and yes. I think we're alone now. I, when I was talking to Tom, he's like, yeah, that was a good moment for me. Yep, that was a good moment. <laughs> Went back to back number one, that had never happened. Billy, of course, had Moni Moni. I think we're alone now when she covered it. It was not only a huge hit here, but it went number one in New Zealand and Canada and Ireland yeah. and number one in the dance charts. I mean, you know, she came up to me and apologized. And I said, apologize. I said, are you kidding? No, what are you apologizing for number one? Are you kidding? <laughs> are you kidding? Your approach to the song, though, you brought so much energy to it because I love Tommy's version, but it's a 60s and yeah. it happened a lot Which of the 80s. Which is still 80s. cool. It See, is. I rock out to that version now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it's I love just Tommy a different James. tempo, a different time yeah. and, and radio was different in, in the way that people listen to things. Right. But that was what was great is they took a lot of 60s songs like Kim Wilde, Keep oh, It Hanging yeah. On. And they had all these hits again with a Moni Moni. Moni, Moni. Speaking of another Tommy yeah. James song, but. And yours is just a little more punchy and it has that 80s feel to it. They're great songs. All these yeah. songs that we've mentioned are good songs. And when you have a great song, it can be reworked. It can be done with an acoustic guitar. It can be done punk version. I've done I Think We're Alone Now, punk, ska. <laughs> you know, I've done it like all dance. And now I've just I've remade the song again and revamped it a little bit for what I'm doing currently, which is a little bit more of a Foo Fighters kind of sound, a little bit with those layered guitars. You had a little bit of sass in that song yeah. with your vocal, you yeah. know? I it mean, it's cool it? people see the new vocal and they go, uh, well, it's weird because they're listening to the new I Think We're Alone Now and I get compliments on singing that song now, which is the, the <laughs> most bizarre thing, but I'm happy. I'm like, okay, well, 
We've accomplished all my goals. One song with the original hit. Well, speaking of Salt Lake City, it was a program director here that really gave it yes. its big start. Yes. It was uh, was Lou Simon, right? Yes. KCPX, I think it was. Yeah, KCPX. And he heard it, heard the album, thought it was a hit. And then his DJ, Morgan Evans, played it. Calls came mm -hmm. in. They had to add it. Everybody else started adding it. And that inspired him to, to have MCA, you know, release it as a 45. Release it, yes. But he Definitely. had to give him the numbers had and to show, get him, right? Uh, exactly. And that was all George behind the, you know, having those relationships. Um, that's why we did the Ogden Mall. And, and brought, brought it full circle again. This is where it all started. Thank you so much. Um, because it really was the fans uh, that were calling in, requesting the song. Totally. I mean, had it not been for the fans all along, you know, and people. Well, you know, that video that she did playing malls, which was a brilliant idea, I actually. Know. And I still have a belief now with that as I've con continued my career. It's only by doing it in front of people that love music, that are attached to you. They know what they want to hear. So I start with that now. And I love social media now for that reason. Because I can get things out to people's hands and they, immediately. And you can get their Once feedback. I have excitement, I go back to, yep. and talk to the powers that be and go, well, this is the homework I've come up with. And there's nothing like it. And we were doing that even back, you know, in the 80s. Pop culture. It's lived on from right. its uh, biggest days of popularity. It's even as big now with the Goldbergs when it yes. was used there. What did you think the, of that? The song keeps having its own little life, which yeah. is great. And the biggest star of them all was Tiffany. No last name needed. They're like capturing the 80s, exactly. right? And what it was like growing up there. And they nailed it because we nailed all, it. 80s kids, we remember I'm a huge that. fan of the Goldbergs. I so know, when that I great? was incorporated with that, I was like, yes, yeah, yeah. definitely. And yeah. Ted. Ted was extremely like funny to me, you know, like the whole scene and everything. It was, I got a little creeped out, but it was funny. <laughs> um, you know, Umbrella Academy loved all the dance moves um, and it was right on time. I mean, for me, I was already releasing the song. Then that happened like the month before I did it. And it was like, this could be even more perfect. It's just the universe telling me, Yes, girl. You're doing it. You know, it. you're doing the right thing. <laughs> um, because sometimes you don't know. You do things from your heart. Do you like it when uh, Weezer referenced it in their song? I heart saw songs. that and I love that as well. Oh, it's that man right? Weezer. Yeah, yeah but they mistakenly that. referenced Debbie Gibson instead of Tiffany, but they left it in. But just to show how big that song was, even that resurgence punk version uh, by Snuff. <laughs> Hear the killers do it. Girls Aloud did it. That went to number four in the UK. Me First and the Gimme Gimme is another punk rock band that did it. But what was cool is that Weird Al did I Think I'm a Clone Now. He was great, what? Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. That's see, cool. listen, see, that's. That's how you know you've really made it. When Weird Al is yes. your song. It's been featured in horror uh, movies like uh, The Cape Fear, of course, in 91. Right. I think we're alone now. <laughs> 10 Cloverfield Lane. Right. That was amazing. That was a heck of a movie. But I want to say one last thing about the song. It's incredible is that Bo Gentry accidentally inserted it backwards in the reel to reel. Oh. And it plays it and it's going backwards. What Tell happened was that. we were we we're listening to the final mix of I Think We're Alone Now over at Bo's apartment. And uh uh you know everybody was smoking way too much weed back then. <laughs> what can I say? And they put the tape on uh upside down. You know, it was a real little reel to reel, yep. seven and a half. And when you do that, it plays backwards. We're listening to I Think We're Alone Now backwards and going, you know, that's not a bad chord progression. <laughs> Bo and uh, Richie go over and write it, and it becomes Mirage. Uh, 
That sounds like it was made up by a press agent, but that's the honest to God's truth. It's, that's an amazing story. Mirage was, I think, Rolo now backwards. I've seen punk bands. I've seen all kinds of different bands perform, I think, Rolo now in the oddest ways. But I love it. And I always get these videos from people around the world yeah. literally going, doing your song tonight. Um, and they'll message me. And I think it's great, you know. Um, even little kids. I had one just with the, his dad was playing acoustic guitar and it was this little boy. He was only <laughs> six years old. He was had the sweetest voice and he was singing, I think we're alone now. And he had a little shake when, every time he sang the chorus. And I thought it was, the I've kept it for all these years, you know. And I just thought it was the cutest thing to see younger people you know, yeah. getting introduced to the song, as well as the stories of people who lived it with Tommy James and the Shondells. So I think Rolona has this big, huge life that I'm always yep. a part of, <laughs> and I'm grateful. So leave us a comment about this pop classic. What's your favorite version? What are your memories of Tommy James or the Debbie Gibson versus Tiffany Pop War of 1987 or 88. Oh man, let's let's get nostalgic below and talk about this. How about replacing yourself at number one 20 years after the songs were big? Really cool stuff. Now, if you like our content, we invite you to subscribe. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. <laughs>